Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at another exciting entrant into the V-Series from Keychron. The Keychron V2, 65% non-edition barebone. Now, this is the third um, Keychron V that I've uh, reviewed and uh, the last two I was extremely impressed with. Despite them being tray mounted, I still consider these, well, the other two anyway, let's see if we find the same with this, but I'm kind of expecting the best, but we'll see. But I do recommend them as, especially for entrance at the price, the availability, the worldwide availability, the um, QMK via open source south facing for those who are concerned of uh, north facing interference which is hardly ever an issue now but you can, can you can know that you're not going to have that issue i mean the numerous things this brings to the table for the price uh this bare bone was um 65 dollars i believe yeah i believe 65 dollars for a, no it's 68 i believe or 69 i think they should have made it 65 but i think it was 69 with the knob um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I ordered it directly from Keychron because I knew it was going to take a while. The Vini Key got delayed. Uh, I, I heard they were delayed in their shipment. I usually buy it from them instead of paying the hefty fee for shipping from Keychron. But I wanted to get a hold of it, to be honest. I don't have the Q2. I have the Q1 and the Q3, but I don't have the Q2, which this is basically the value version. I mean, I'm. I can only assume V stands for value and Q stands for quality. Not that this is not quality or so far the V series, but so I'm expecting the best, but let me stop talking and let's go ahead and take a look what we've got in the, uh, this came very well packaged in a um, bubble wrap container and an envelope. It actually took me a minute to get into it. So um, I appreciate when it's sent like that, but it was sent DHL. So. So we have, as always, the protective cover foam. I've heard of some people using this as filler, but it's too open cell for me, in my opinion. Um, now, these should already come pre-silicone filled. We have, of course, our quick start guide. Um, shows that it has Via out of the box, which makes it super easy. Nowadays, uh, you can just go to uh, useviaapp on your web browser and use Via and control your keyboard straight from your web browser. I... I know, we're living in the future. No, I, I mean, I get how it works. It's pretty cool. It makes it easier and more accessible to a lot of people, and I think it's a good move. I don't prefer it, but that's neither here nor there. So, uh, of course, like with all Keychrons, they've been very, uh, they've always been very Mac aware, let's say. I almost want to say Mac centric. Uh, so they have switches usually on all of them for the Mac of Windows mode, which just switches them around uh, how the the modifier keys are set and yeah, this is talking tutorial the warranty troubleshooting tips factory reset a lot of handy information but they also include a fairly thick uh, handbook in a couple of different languages that has good information um, they always include any other hot swap or uh, barebone kits they always include this card make sure that those pins are straight make sure you put it in straight I mean don't get me wrong I think it's a good idea. I know a lot of people like, well, I, I know about that. There's a lot of people that don't. I think those little cards have probably saved many a socket. Just my opinion. Of course, we got the keyboard, but I'm going to go ahead and set that aside for right now and see what else we got in here. We have a nice USB C to USB C cable. That's it. Well, where's the. Uh... Oh, there's the adapter. So before they would include it connected, I. Keychron, come on, if you if you watch one of my videos, put this on a tail so that it can stay connected with the cable and it can stay with it, please. Simple, won't cost much. They got some extra shoes, screws for the cases, very basic horseshoe style uh, switch puller, and an Allen wrench uh, for the case screws as well as a screwdriver for, I believe, the plate screws. Um, and then we just have a nice wire keycap puller. So that's what we're getting out of the box in here. I'm going to go ahead and put everything back in because I don't need any of it right now. And here we are. 
Here's the Keychron V2, 65%. South facing, screw in stabilizers, knob edition, QMK via. Silicone padding between the plate and the PCB tray mount, but still a very nice keyboard. I mean, looking at it already, I know. I mean, this is for all intents and purposes, this is the uh, uh, plastic version of the Q2. Yes, it doesn't have gasket mounting, and I still, I still have to check compatibilities between PCB. I haven't done that. Um, there may not be much. I mean, the the ports on the same side, the switch is basically in the same side. Um, now, we can't see it from this side because I got it in the carbon black, not the semi-translucent. Uh, not that I don't like the semi-translucent, but I, I actually do prefer uh, the solid black. But from here, you can kind of see underneath to that silicone pad is a very significant and hefty silicone pad, which adds quite amount of weight. I would say this is probably uh, six, 700 grams. I'd, I'd pull out my scale right now, but it's not quite a kilo, uh, but it's closer to it than half, I would guess. Um, anyway, it's got the screw and stabs with which, I mean, if we uh, take a quick lube, <laughs> look at it, lube at it, we can take a quick look that they just kind of put a big old daub now, that is whiter grease. There's a chance that could be Crytox, but that could definitely have been done better. It's It was better on the other ones, but I don't know. We'll see how it works. Now, the... Huh. The stems on all the stabilizers but the space bar are grayish, but the ones on the space bar are white. So, usually they all come in the same color. Um, let's hope they're not much different. The stems actually feel very soft. I don't know, but I think that they're starting to move or have moved to palm housings inside of stems. At least I've come across it in a couple of the keyboards that I've recently reviewed, and I think it's a very nice change. Now, before we um, pop some keys on her and some switches, let's uh, see what the RGB looks like. So, as always, Keychron is good at delivering a good um, experience. Now, I have yet to try if there's per key RGB. I'm going to guess that if it is, it's going to be via um, QMK instead of via. <laughs> it's going to be through QMK rather than via. Let me say that. Um, but their RGB has always been very bright. They have a nice selection of... Uh, uh, of effects already built in if that's your thing um, and obviously you can set it either turn it off lower it or set it to a monochrome color you know to match whichever keycaps that you might have on there or whichever you just prefer um, obviously it has the knob the knob is standardly programmed to be volume up and down and then mute when you press it but it can be programmed and used for many different things from either scrolling up and down on a web page zooming in and out um, uh, scroll, scrubbing a timeline if you're doing a video or music editing. There's literally anything that you're doing back and forth, up and down, can be programmed to this. Um, so usually you want to, if you can't find directly, you'll find a keyboard shortcut in the particular application that you want to do, whatever it is you're trying to do. And then you can map it in via to directly to that key combination so that it does it for you. That's basically what you need. Anyway. Uh, so far, this is an extremely nice build, nice RGB, uh, stabilizers are screw-ins, so they're really nice, has a nice CNC metal textured knob, um, Keychron has definitely been kicking it out of the park. I had my issues with boards in the past and their support, but I must say they have improved and I've got to give them props. The keyboards that they've put out, especially in the last six months, have been phenomenal. Uh, at the price, it's just, it's hard to find another keyboard that has as many features as this, is open source for this price. And that is from a company that is, has become much more reliable than in the past. Their QAQC has improved as well as your customer support. So. Just got to give them props for that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and load up some switches. Now, today I was I'm kind of stuck between 
a few switches to go in there. I kind of wanted to, again, skew uh, aesthetics and go with a, um, I think these are royal purples, but they're just a little too clacky to me. Um, so then I thought, how about, I was also thinking about some Gatoron Milky Black that I have. Uh, they're a little too clacky to them. They're not lube. They do sound a little bit. They do sound much better lube, I should say. Not a little much better lube. Then I was like, ah, I did get quite a few set of these uh, j -Wick. Uh I like them. They're, they're, they're nice. They're not the best tactiles, but they're just nice. And I like them stock. The uh, j -Wick T1. I got them in both the clear PC top and uh, the full, um, you know, non-RGB basically so it's going to block a lot of the RGB here that's why I wanted to go ahead and show it off the bat but because the keycap set that I think I'm going to go with I, I thought maybe this would be a good uh, mix so I'm going to go ahead and uh, load some switches up and then we'll pick out some keys And here it is, Keychron V2 loaded up with some JWIG T1 tactile switches. I wanted to just plug it in real quick and see how much of the RGB is getting blocked. I'm sure, a good percentage of it. Well, despite it being blocked, it's actually not too bad. I mean, you can see it. Once I put the keycaps on here, I doubt you're going to be able to see it in regular light. But at night, you'll definitely see a little bit of glow coming in from underneath. That's how bright these are, because they don't have the SMD windows. Yep. Um, it's a steel plate. I figured as much the other ones were. I didn't think they'd change and uh, make it a, an aluminum plate. Now what I did just there is just a magnet. Magnet sticks to steel, won't stick to aluminum. Just a little trick. Anyway, the double shot keycap set that I got from Gliging, G-Ling, or G-L-I-G-I-N-G. It's a... Uh, they have quite a number of clone sets. They do not clone the novelties. All they do is add these X's and zeros. So if you ever come across these, uh, I've gotten good deals on these. I know they sometimes sell for as high as $50, but I've paid about, I don't think I've paid more than 20 something dollars for a set. They are double, uh, double shot. So, and I think they have a little bit better of a tone because they are thicker they're not the thickest but they are well made in my opinion they have nice clear crisp legends um, they're actually a little bit bigger which I like um, I do prefer actually the old school the legends that cover the entire cap but those are usually on the SA or the MT3 caps so anyway I'm gonna load up this dark hammerhead set from I'm not gonna try to pronounce it this double shot cherry profile um, hammerhead set onto the key cron and we'll be back and here she is key cron v2 with hammerhead dark double shot i gotta say it's very clean looking at these caps are not perfect by any means but they are pretty good especially for the price so thankfully i checked reddit prior to finishing up this video because there was a few questions that were asked that i probably should have handled originally but anyway i wanted to go ahead and give you guys some measurements now for the front of this board just sitting flat without using the fold out feet gives you a front chin height of 23 millimeters with a back of 29.5 millimeters um, now the type typing angle when it's laying flat is six degrees if you're to pull out the shortest feet because it does have two sets of feet it is going to take take the back height up to 38 millimeters and the typing angle to 10 degrees now if you pull out the longer feet 
and place it up, you're looking at a height of 44 millimeters in the back with a typing angle of 13 degrees, which seems kind of high for me. So definitely, if you're going to go at that route, I would suggest a wrist rest at that point. We also wanted to take a look at profiles here. Now, I mean, this is a... I don't have the Q2, so I can't compare the Q2 to the V2. Um, but as far as profiles and everything goes, it almost looks like... I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that they used the same CAD files uh, to design both of them. You know, obviously making differences for tolerances of the material, because each material is going to work differently under, you know, CNC, um, laser cutting, whatever they're doing. But I did want... This is the V1, but this is the um, translucent one. So I kind of wanted to show you guys the difference between the two and how, I mean, while they're different, they're both very similar. I mean, this one, yes, it's a little bit more transparent. You can definitely see from below. Um, I'm not necessarily usually the biggest fan of trans or semi-translucent or semi-opaque, whichever you want to call them. Um, cases for the most part but I think this one's done quite well because it's dark and it's dark enough to where on the top I mean it's a little I don't know steampunkish in my opinion that you can see the screws so I actually like this look um, now granted this does for the most part except for the plate the um, the screws for the case do go into metal um, screw holes so you're not gonna have to worry about stripping those though I would be careful with removing um, and the screws that hold down the plate, though they're better quality than what you'd usually find in a budget board. Um, the typing experiences for these keyboards, a lot of it really does depend on the switches and the keycaps. I, I, I've got to tell you that I know that a lot of people speak about gasket mounting boards, and don't get me wrong, a flexi board is nice, but also, I mean, have you ever tried to use a laptop on a trampoline? There's, you know, there's a middle ground for everything. So, well, don't get me wrong, I, I like some gasket mounted boards. It's not a necessity for me. I think as long as the board is solid, because I am also a programmer, a couple of programmers asked, what's the typing experience? Like, personally, I'm trying to do more tests with Cherry profile to show you know, if there is or isn't interference, because I think that's about a thing of the past. Not quite, but we're almost there. But I personally, I don't like typing on Cherry. I mess up more. My words per minute go down. Um, now, if I use Cherry for a couple of days, I'll start to even out. But naturally, when I come to any SA, ASA, MT3, um, the taller sculpted, um, I mean, I can even work with OEM, but I prefer more of a sculpted. I like the bigger legends. I am more productive on SA keycaps. As far as switches go, I don't think really one switch or type of switch is going to improve or decrease your productivity. It's more about what's pleasurable to you. I mean, some people like the click and the clack. So blues may actually, because they make you happy, may actually make you more productive. So I'm not the one to say that. I know for myself, I like tactiles. I like a, a nice heavy tactile. I mean, for the most part, I use either U4s or U4Ts a lot for my dailies because I just love the feel of them. And because I'm happy, I flow more. You know, if my keyboard is a point of uh, a pain point, obviously that's going to, you know, stop. Uh, it's going to mess with my creativity. So I think an important part of any typing experience, regardless of the keyboard, I mean, assuming that the keyboard has at least a stable, you know, it's not going to be shaking around. Um, the plate's not wobbly, you know, bugs. As long as it's a stable keyboard, then it comes down to your preferences and switches and the keycaps that your fingers are going to feel more comfortable with. Now, granted, if you're typing and typing a lot after a while, you can get used to crappy keyboards. I know I've worked on <laughs> some really crappy keyboards. I've written code on laptop keyboards as much as I hate using a laptop keyboard. But hey, if that's all you got, that's all you got. So I wanted to make sure that I covered those typing angles, covered the differences between what is the uh, opaque, fully opaque uh, black, and then the translucent black. I prefer the black, but I don't mind this uh, semi-opaque, semi-translucent black. I actually think it's kind of cool because being able to see the screw nuts in there. So, but for me personally, 
I find taller sculpted caps. Just I'm just more used to them. Now granted, I did start on a computer back in the 80s when all keycaps were basically big and tall and loud. So that probably has a big part to do with it. I mean, but I can use XDA caps, no problem. I know a lot of people say, XDA, I can't, you know, because I can't feel it. It's like, as long as I, my fingers can find the home key, that's the one thing I don't get are keycaps without the home bar keys or the, the bars on the home key. It's like, like, okay, you expect me to look at the keyboard then every time I type because, you know, I'm like, feeling around. Where am I? Where am I? Where, where are those? Oh, uh, okay, there they are. I don't know. I mean, I know with the SA and the, it's, it's, it, they're, like these, these are, um, these are Akko ASA, I believe, bread. So they just have the little tiny bump, which eh, it's all right, but it's more, it seems more brailish to me. I prefer the home bar. Anyway, I wanted to cover those things uh, beforehand but as far I mean because I've been playing around with this keyboard even with the cherry keycaps and haven't done no mods to it and I'm quite enjoying it this it's a great keyboard it almost makes me want to buy the Q2 finally but I mean I'm, I'm fine for right now because the next one that's coming out is the V3 which is the TKL uh, that's gonna be released on the 11th I believe Wow, it's already October where'd this year go anyway Yes, I will probably be picking that one up as well and doing a review of it. But any other questions you guys got, please shoot them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to come back to them when I do my modification video because I'm definitely going to be modifying this. I'm liking video. how she sounds already. Oh, pulled the wrong foot down. I'm liking how she sounds. It's, uh, I, I'm not disappointed. I am going to come and mod her. But I've got to say, actually, I, just a double entrant, I picked the Dark Hammerhead kit because I feel that Keychron's V-Series is a shark coming for its competition. Now, speaking of, just real quick, I don't, um, I, I had somebody on the Reddit thread, one of the members, ask if I could compare to uh, the LK67, uh, the Gamma K LK67, also known as a Tom 680, uh, which is a 65% kit. Now, obviously, they are slight differences um they both have the exploded arrow cluster but uh the v2 is missing a key um now because this is via i have no issue because i know i can program you know symmetric keys i i'm gonna you know there's a couple different uh if i just had the arrow keys i could still work with it because it's via and it's easy to program like i said you go to use via.app on your browser in your browser and it should just recognize it and you can go from there. This requires software that only runs on Windows. This I can program on my Linux desktop. Now, this, now this particular one is a wired version, uh, but the do not have a wireless version. Most of the time, they do come in three mode as well, which the Keychron B series does not come in wireless. So wireless is, if it's wireless is something that you need, then, you know, Keychron is, is more of a workstation board, but I mean, it's just, it's just well built. Now, <clears throat> if we take the wired version of this, I think it roughly um, runs MSRP 50 to $60, roughly just a few dollars less than this one. I cannot recommend this one more. Don't get me wrong. I love LK67s. Actually, I have several of them. Um, and I've built quite a few for friends. A lot of people are attracted to it. It ha you know, it does have this slimmer look, but it has the wireless capability, and a lot of people uh, do like it. I personally, if I can, I just work wired. It just, I, I, I like my mice wireless, but I like my keyboards wired. But that's just my quirk. But anyway, so uh, compared to the LK67, don't get me wrong, like I said, the LK67 is a great board, uh, but, I would get the Keychron over this keyboard. Now, what's another 65% that we have? There is, <clears throat> I know, Epo Maker has rebranded this, but uh, this is the Ducato VN66. Uh, VN, yeah, VN66. The 96 is the big one with the knob, uh, numpad missing some buttons. Uh, this is a 
it's a, it's a nice kit. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's actually quite solid. It's built a lot more substantially. It actually looks like it was built by the same manufacturer that built um, the NK or the NA. Uh, NJ80s, which later became the TH80s. Uh, they have a lot of similarities, both on the outside and the inside. But they're quite solid kits. Um, this one I've done only just minimal, minimal modifications to. And it is quite a great board. It also is Bluetooth and wireless. Uh, but it has um, limited software because it only runs with Windows. And if I can remember, it was a little glitchy, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think I still think this one's a better value. This one, I believe, it still sells on KP Republic for I think a little bit more than this one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, other 65% boards. Uh, we've got the RK68. This is an extremely popular 65%. Uh, uh, now it doesn't come with knock. It is your standard 65 compressed layout. But I've seen this board uh, a lot of times. It retails higher than. The Keychron does, and the Keychron is it, it is definitely a better board. Now this one, I have done some modifications, and it's still, in my opinion, not as good as this thing is stock. It just plus the software, the configurability. So I just wanted to quickly. I didn't. I didn't want to really bring in other keyboards, but I kind of wanted to give a comparison of. You know the different you know what's available out there but for the price especially if you're entering the game or heck if you've been doing it for a while because i like this keyboard and i'm i mean i i use the v1 for a while i i enjoy it it is a nice keyboard it is not the best but for the price i think honestly i think that if it's if it retailed for more it'd still be good i mean not yeah I don't want to say any percentages, but I mean, it, it feels like you paid more for it. That's all. And again, I paid for this full price. Keychron did not send this out to, I mean, they sent it out to me because I ordered it. Because um, I did order directly from Keychron. I usually don't because they're high shipping. But I wanted to get it in hands because I, I, I knew that I was going to enjoy this. I've been wanting to get the Q2 for a while. It kind of flip-flopped here and there because of the price, you know, 169 I believe, for the non-version. And um, this is basically it, except for the gasket mount, and it's plastic. But I actually prefer uh, plastic. Uh, one of the things I will be looking into in further videos is different plates. Uh, Keychron releases DMG files for all their plates, which are you do have to convert them, but you can either use them for 3D printing plates or getting uh, laser or CNC cut plates, depending on what material you're using. So a lot of people don't know that. Um, I think it's pretty cool of them to do that. So that's if you do have access to that or in many cities, there are actually shops that, you know, you can send the files. Sometimes they even have the website all set up. You send the files. It gives you a, a quote and even sets it up and can ship it to you. So um, I don't know any offhand uh, and I'm not promoting anybody. So I'm just saying there is ability. And even like I said, even if you have a 3D printer, make a PLA plate, see what it sounds like. I mean, it can't hurt. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sound test on this stock as it is but i'm definitely going to be coming back to it so far uh, it's probably so far and i haven't even done a full sound test my favorite so far of the v series uh don't get me wrong it's it's got a lot of competition with the v1 but i don't know i i like it a lot i love the the fat bezels um i almost wish that it came if they had this in the same color as the C, the Keycon C series, that beige, that washed out 80s, 90s beige, I'd actually probably buy a couple just because. Um, this is my first one, so I'm going to keep it this way, but I may in the future buy another one and just spray paint it because I, I don't know, unless Keychron uh, add a color. Hmm? Beige? Hmm? <laughs> anyway, until next transmission. Keep calm, keyboard on.